Hey guys, I am going to Tallgrass Prairie today. I just want to check the area. Um, it's like acres of land where you can hike, or you can go and picnic, or you can go nature trailing, um, watch like wild animals like bisons. Um, you can also go there and paint. You can bring your easel um, and your canvas. But I don't think that would be a good idea for today because I heard that they're burning um, the grass. Something to do with spring. <laughs> I don't know. But um, we'll see if I could get good shots with my new camera, take some photos, and um, maybe some photos so that I can paint it later on. Yeah. So I'm gonna be on my way to the uh, Tallgrass Prairie National Reserve in Strong City in Kansas. It is um, 114 miles from here, so it's an hour and 42 minute drive. All right, see you there. Before this land became Tallgrass Prairie National Preserve, many people have cared for it. This was the land of the Kaw, Osage, Wichita, and Pawnee before its legacy of owners, which included railroads, settlers, ranchers, and business people.
service near Strong City, Kansas, between Wichita and Topeka. Tall Grass Prairie once covered 140 million acres of North America. Now less than 4% remains, mostly in the Flint Hills of Kansas. Before humans lived here, lightning ignited fires raced unchecked over the prairie until a large river or stream stopped them. Bison followed the burning prairie, grazing on tender new plant shoots. American Indians knew well the value of the prairie and of human harmony with nature. Tribes of Kaw, Osage, Wichita, and Pawnee made this region their home and hunting grounds. Millions of bison roamed the plains, providing food, shelter, and ceremonial life for the tribes. As the United States expanded, Indian removal policies forced the Indians onto reservations and changed their cultures. In part to subdue the Indians, the bison were slaughtered almost to extinction. A settlement and agriculture followed. The tall grass prairie made its last stand.
D.W. Wilder, editor of Hiawatha World, 1884, said that, Whenever you stop on the prairie to lunch or camp and gaze around, there is a picture such as the poet and painter never succeeded in transferring to book or canvas. We ought to have saved a park in Kansas, 10,000 acres broad, the prairie as it came from the hand of God, not a foot or an inch desecrated by improvements and cultivation. It's only a memory.